guys, it's Renee and welcome to another skincare chat. Today we're going to be talking about moisturizers and that's probably the most subjective out of all the skincare products. It's really preference based. So first we're going to geek out, talk about the components and ingredients that make up a moisturizer so that you can have a better understanding about what you need for your skin type. And then we'll talk about what kind of products you should be looking for for your skin needs. These products make up the last few steps of our skincare routine after serums and ampoules, and they're all about hydration and moisturizing. The purpose of hydration is to bind water into our skin, and the purpose of moisturizing is to prevent that water from leaving our skin. So it's really important that hydration comes before moisturizing. Humectants are basically water binders. They're substances that draw the water molecules from their surroundings into themselves. So if your moisturizer with humectant is on your skin, then it's gonna rehydrate your skin and increase the moisture levels. So I'm listing the humectant ingredients and we're definitely gonna go through some of the more popular ones. Of course there's glycerin or glycerol. This is the one that you will see most often. It is everywhere, it's in most things and it's easily available and it's actually a very inexpensive ingredient. One of my favorite humectant ingredients is hyaluronic acid. It has got a lot more of a luxurious feel than glycerin. It is a lot thinner, it's not sticky, it's more expensive too, but this is actually present already in our own bodies as connective tissue. This ingredient holds a thousand times its weight in water. And you know I'm a huge fan of this Hadalabo line, the Gokujun line. Um, it's all about super hyaluronic acid. In my experience, these products are some of the most well-formulated that I've ever tried. When you have a badly formulated product where the humectant content is too high, it can actually cause irritation on your skin, and it can even draw moisture out from your skin. That has definitely happened to me before. So I'm at a point now where I can actually tell right away I've gotten very sensitive to very high levels of humectants in a form. Formula. Another ingredient I want to talk to you about, which was brought to my attention by the fabulous ladies at GlowRecipe.com, is the Tremella Mushroom. So the Tremella Mushroom is a natural alternative to hyaluronic acid. It's very commonly consumed in sweet dessert soups, and it's very well known for its health benefits, but apparently this ingredient has the ability to hold 500 times its weight in water as well. Companies like SK2 and the amazing La Prairie have also used this ingredient in their skin products. I am loving these two products from Earth's Recipe combined. They are a powerhouse individually. They're amazing, super hydrating, not greasy, not oily, and not heavy. Sugars are also a common humectant ingredient. So glucose, fructose, and my favorite, honey. Don't even get me started on my honey products. It's definitely been a big theme for me in skincare this winter. I've been using honey essence serum ampoule cream. I mean, it's just such a great ingredient if you have dry skin. It's also got other healing properties, soothing properties to it as well. Another great humectant ingredient is collagen. I think there needs to be a little bit more of a better understanding of this ingredient because I feel a lot of people believe that if you apply collagen topically, that, that it will increase the collagen in your, or have something to do with the collagen that's present in your skin. It doesn't do any of that because the collagen molecules are just quite large. They're too large to sink in anywhere, um, but they are an amazing humectant. So if you do see collagen products out there, whether it's creams or face masks, it's not about increasing the collagen in your own skin. It's all about moisturizing and hydrating your skin. There are also amino acids and proteins that are great humectants, but also lactic acid and AHAs. Those tend to be the acids that are better for you when you have dry skin. Emollient is used a lot to describe the texture of a cream, and that's exactly what they do. They actually give moisturizers a nice creamy texture. The more emollient, the thicker it is. The function of emollients is to smooth out the surface of your skin. So they fill in all the cracks that are produced by skin flaking off, dryness. You know how your legs get in the wintertime, the scales, the flaking, and then you rub some body cream over it, and it's smooth. You have emollients to thank for that. And what's filling in those cracks, what makes something emollient, are the lipids and the oils. Now, oils is something I'm gonna talk about separately because there is so much to them and there's so much to say. Emollient ingredients include silicone, vegetable oils such as grapeseed, jojoba oil, 
butters like cocoa butter, shea butter, of course they're fatty acids and fatty alcohols that basically serve as thickening agents. Now this is really important to note. The emollient lipids that are the most similar to the ones found in our skin naturally aid barrier repair the fastest and the most. So, ceramides. On our outermost layer of the skin, the epidermis, ceramides help the skin cells form a really healthy barrier, which prevents moisture loss and prevents bacteria and pollutants from getting in. How emollient a moisturizer is has everything to do with the lipid and liquid ratio. So with our lotions, our emulsions, where sometimes the texture is even a little gel-like, there is a higher liquid to lipid ratio. And those really thick and heavy creams that can leave like a sheen on the skin, those tend to have a lot more lipids in there. Occlusive ingredients form a film over the skin that just traps water in. It, they can't escape. So the most effective occlusive ingredient and the most commonly seen in a lot of cosmetics is petroleum jelly. That blocks 98% of water loss from your skin. Cosmetical and pharmaceutical grade petroleum is completely refined and purified. That being said, everyone is entitled to choose what they're comfortable with. It is my understanding that petroleum jelly or mineral oils are actually non-comedogenic. They don't block pores, although you may want to be very cautious if you have acne or acne-prone skin. So when I was suffering from some dry, itchy patches on my face, on my hands, my dermatologist recommend I use Aquaphor. Because it's better than Vaseline, it's got panthenol, it's got vitamin B, it's got chamomile, it's got glycerin, um, so it's moisturizing as well. But it's also incredibly gentle. And so I would put this over my dry patches and nothing would heal them faster. In fact, every once in a while, I'll actually use this as an overnight mask and the next day my skin would be plump and moisturized. That water is going nowhere. So when I found this, I was so happy because this one has a hands-free applicator, which actually blends the product out over your skin like a foundation blender. If you want a natural alternative to Aquaphor or Vaseline, then you've got this, which is Alba's Unpetroleum Multipurpose Jelly, which uses beeswax as well as other oils. Or you can use one of my favorite products of all time, Egyptian Magic, and this is like a magic occlusive cream. It only has six ingredients in it, and the two occlusive ingredients are beeswax, but also olive oil. And the other four ingredients are honey, bee pollen, royal jelly extract, and bee propolis. It's like a solid, it's like shea butter, it's solid and waxy, but as soon as you use it, it turns into an oil. So aside from the humectants, emollients, and occlusives, a lot of moisturizers will have a whole bunch of other ingredients that are geared towards benefiting your skin for whatever your skin needs. So we're gonna basically go from the lightest to the heaviest consistency, going from more hydrating to moisturizing. So this lotion from Hada Labo is actually categorized as a moisturizer with the consistency of a toner. And that's exactly what it is. It's got a lot of humectants without a trace of oils. So if you have really oily skin, this may be all you need as a moisturizer. Your skin is probably already very, very good at naturally trapping in moisture. Sometimes your oily skin is overproducing to make up for the lack of hydration in your skin because your sebum will trap the moisture in your skin. So definitely layering very light and more hydrating products would be great at balancing things out. If you have dry skin, most likely you're dehydrated as well. So this is a great first layer product. And my general approach towards application is a few light layers are better than one heavy one, which is the same approach I have towards dressing for the winter. But really, depending on your skin type, depending on the season, maybe you just need one moisturizing product, or maybe you need a combination of them. And then you have something that's very new to me, which are moisturizing liquids. These are very, very potent when it comes to hydration. They are very heavily concentrated in the humectants, but also have a lot of hydrating ingredients, and they're lighter on the emollients. These are much thinner in consistency, and I would say these are moisturizers with the consistency and ingredient richness of an essence. This is a great layer to add, particularly if you have very dry, dehydrated skin, or if it's during the fall, winter months. I can't tell you how much these products just plump out the skin. If you have any fine lines that come from dryness, they will disappear. Super rich in humectants, 
But also, both these products contain ceramides and squalene, which are naturally found in our skin cells on the epidermis layer of our skin. These are great products for repair or strengthening your skin, and they work fast. Then you have your emulsions and lightweight moisturizers. Their consistency is a little milky, and they are literally an emulsion of oil and water. Usually, these are my final step moisturizer, as you can see in my summer skincare routine, or when my skin is feeling less dry and more dehydrated. Sometimes these products can be more gel-like, aqueous or oil-free, which means they depend more on thickeners to give it texture. So creams can come in a whole variety of consistencies from Belif's Aqua Balm, which is their most popular moisturizer. And it's a lightweight, more gel-like refreshing consistency that depends a lot on hydrating and humectant ingredients. This is what I always recommend for a combination to oily skin. Then on the other end of the spectrum, for very dry skin, you've got the incredibly thick emollient, greasy, and quite occlusive creams like Garrison Complex 9 cream and Miss Flower and Mr. Honey Cream, which is quite occlusive and quite oily on the skin. Well, that's it for my moisturizer talk. I hope that this was helpful, not too boring, but it's given you a lot of good information. I would love to know what your skin type is. Anyway, thank you so much for watching, and I will see you next time. Bye!